Well, I'm waiting on the order of service to pop up here so I know what I'm doing. Say welcome. <laughs> welcome. Is that what you want me to say? All right, say? that was the end of your part. It's my turn. <laughs> that was my part, okay. That was your part. You said welcome. <laughs> All right. All right. Glad to have everybody here this morning. Uh, again, if you're uh, online uh, or whatever, and this is your first time uh, with us, and ask you to just text the word welcome. How's that? I said the word welcome. You said welcome. <laughs> text the word welcome to 704 610 3475. We'd like to know uh, that you're with us. All right. Uh, and uh, y'all look, y'all look awful quiet this morning. Hot. Hot? Hot. So, all right. Y'all seem to be awful quiet. Make them sing, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll sing loud. Whatever we're doing. All oh, right. Let's all stand and join together and sing because he lives. <laughs> God said his son, the God of Jesus, he got to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died to buy my God on, and empty grave is ever broke, my Savior lives, because he Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
next uh, read Psalm 20. In times of trouble, may the Lord respond to your cry. May the God of Israel keep you safe from all harm. May he send you help from his sanctuary and strength, strengthen you from Jerusalem. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. May he grant your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory, flying banners to honor our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed king. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Some nations boast of their armies and weapons, but we boast in the Lord our God. Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. Give victory to our king, O Lord. Respond to our cry for help. And as we pray together this morning, uh, several prayer requests ask you to uh, remember uh, Edna Carter. Uh, some of you, uh, well, I guess none of you maybe know Edna, uh, but her daughter uh, is the young lady that's been coming, sitting back on the back corner back there beside of Eddie, uh, her and her fiance. Uh, her mother has some um, uh, liver disease and has, she goes every week and has to have fluid drawn off. Uh, but last night uh, she failed in her home and the EMTs had to bust in her door and uh, so she's in the hospital I think she, she didn't break anything but uh, she's beat up and so uh, remember her and uh, and, uh, and Kathy if she uh, tries to stay with her you know the rules of the hospital how all that works which just adds stress to it uh, continue to remember David uh, David Moss uh, and also uh, Tim and Sherry uh, Tim is improving uh, for those of you who don't know Tim uh, both of them have, uh, have been diagnosed with COVID. Tim has been in a hospital in ICU on a ventilator. Uh, but again, uh, just to assure you, uh, they know where they got it, how they got it. Um, and it was not here, and they have not been here since before they got it. Uh, so uh, we don't have it. Uh, and so we do continue to remember Tim. He is uh, improving. Uh, one of the good things uh, Sherry said was that his kidneys are still uh, functioning well, uh, so um, he did have uh, a little bit of paralysis on his left side to start with uh, before they actually put him on the ventilator, and so um, just praying for his recovery, uh, and then uh, there are, are two more that I don't know that I can say who they are uh, that uh, I know of, uh, some of, many of you would know uh, who it is as well if I told you, uh, but uh, I don't... Uh, since I hadn't been given permission to uh, tell all the business of everybody in the world, uh, I will just say let's, uh, there's another, uh, another two that are, they are connected uh, remotely to our church, and so let's uh, remember uh, them and, uh, at uh, this time as well. All right, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I thank you today uh, for allowing us to gather this morning. God, I thank you uh, that we can gather today and sing uh, and worship because, uh, because he lives. God, we don't gather uh, like, uh, like other world religions that gather around a, uh, gather around a tomb, that gather uh, in, uh, to worship a, a dead God, to worship uh, a, an idol, a statue. God, we worship uh, a living Savior, uh, one that uh, lives and reigns and uh, is, uh, is coming again. Uh, God, we just uh, ask you today uh, to guide and direct in all that we do here this morning, that everything that we say, everything that we do, every thought uh, would be on you. Uh, God, that your purpose would be accomplished. Uh, God, that our lives would be different for having been in this place today. Uh, Father, if there's one today that's uh, here, one that's listening online that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Savior, Father, I pray that you would stir their heart, convict them, speak to them, uh, that they would see the need, that they would realize uh, they, they need a Savior, uh, God, that uh, they would uh, accept him into their life. We'll give you the glory and the honor for all that you do, for it's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Uh, just uh, real quick, just again remind you, uh, as we uh, get used, Tommy said uh, a moment ago we were talking, he said, I'll be glad when things get back to normal. Uh, I 
said, I don't know what normal, I don't know, but I think this might, I'm afraid this might be normal for a while. Uh, and so, uh, but uh, because of that, obviously we're not uh, passing offering plates. And so uh, the, the buckets are, we got a lot of faith. Uh, we have two five-gallon buckets to take up the offering. So that's, uh, that's faith right there. Um, and if you got any change, you can throw that in there. We'll, we're going to sell quarters for 50 cents a piece. That's, uh, that's our uh, new plan. They, uh, all these stores are wanting change. We'll, we'll hook them up. I'm going to sell them some quarters. I'll swap them quarters for dollar bills all day long. Uh, and uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll pay off the building that way. So, uh, but uh, I said those are back there. Or you can text uh, again to 704-802-1881. Uh, that was a good year. That was the year Archie was born. Uh, and so uh, remember that again. It, uh, it, uh, again, that system works well. Uh, and uh, if you want to give that way, it's secure. So you're welcome to use uh, that system uh, as well. All right, Archie, you gonna make them stand back up? Yeah, stand back up. Yeah. <laughs> Let's all stand and sing "Song of Love." You'll like this one. in Christianity and every other uh, religion in the world is hope. Uh, hope means all the difference uh, in, in the world. It's a, uh, you may not like this example, but uh, they, uh, some scientists did a study uh, with some mice. They would put them in a bucket um, and basically, uh, I, I know the cruelty people will probably lose their minds, but uh, they would take those mice and basically uh, let them drown and they would swim and the mice would give up uh, just a few minutes into, the, in, into being put in the water. Uh, but then they took a group of mice and they would put them in that same water and just before they drowned, they would take them and get them out and put them up on dry land and they'd put them back. I know, I know don't call me, call PETA, somebody, I didn't do it. Uh, 
but I'm just telling you the example. They'd take them and they'd get them out of the water just before they drown. And those mice uh, would continue to fight uh, for days because they had hope. They had hope that somebody was going to come along uh, and rescue them. Uh, and again, I, I hate to compare us to mice. Uh, I know my wife didn't even want to talk about mice, uh, but hope. Uh, hope to build my future. That's what Jesus Christ is. That's the same because he lives. Uh, we have hope uh, because uh, he lives. Take your Bible this morning and turn with me to the Gospel of John. John, the 14th chapter. We're going to start this morning looking uh, at uh, seven things here. Um, that uh, Jesus tells uh, his disciples. Again, we uh, talked about this some last week, uh, that this passage, the 14th chapter, begins uh, with Jesus saying, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, then it kind of veers off because his disciples start asking a couple questions. Philip wants to know where Jesus is going, and, uh, or excuse me, Thomas wants to know where Jesus is going, and Philip uh, wants to see the Father. Uh, but now we get back on, uh, on track uh, of what Jesus was trying to address uh, with the disciples. He's getting ready to leave them. Uh, he's getting ready to be crucified, ultimately his uh, re resurrection and ascension. Uh, and so the disciples are, are about to go through uh, an extremely uh, difficult time. And so Jesus, back to that, let not your heart be troubled, uh, comes forward and says, if you, know, if you believe in me, uh, you'll keep my commandments. And then around that, uh, we have uh, seven things uh, that Jesus talks about uh, that he is giving, to seven things uh, for the believer uh, to live in, seven things that give us the hope we were just talking about, seven things uh, that uh, keep our hearts uh from being troubled, beginning with uh, what we read uh, here in uh, verse 12 when uh, he says to them, Verily, verily. Uh, and, and those are words that uh, are used pretty often in the Bible. And uh, they're, they're words, I think, that sometimes get used so often. Uh, we read them so often. Those are uh, what we sometimes, uh, in, in English, that they, they weren't, uh, but we turn them into sometimes filler words. Uh, we uh, you hear people, uh, we talk sometimes, and, and people will say, uh, well, you know, uh, you know, they'll, you know and, and like man, you know, those kind of things that are just kind of filler words that we uh, stick in uh, to our conversation. We have read verily, verily so much that I think they've almost become filler words to us. We just kind of skip right over them on into uh, what Jesus is actually about to say. Well, verily, verily, are extremely important words. I'm not going to preach on verily, verily this morning, uh, but when you see those words, that, that, that is like Jesus going, hey, pay attention. Uh, you know, that, that what I'm about to say, you know, everything I say is important, but hey, what I'm about to say is really important. And so, uh, verily, verily, or, or truly, truly, uh, is another way. Uh, of seeing those words. And uh, you can tell by what he's about to say following uh, those words how important they are uh, when he tells his disciples that uh, I, I say to you, uh, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do and greater works uh, than these we do because I'm going uh, to the Father. Uh, and so this morning I want us to look uh, at, at, uh, at, at wonderful works, at uh, what are works, what, what is he talking about uh, in, uh, in, in this passage? What exactly uh, does Jesus mean? This passage has been taken uh, over the years and uh, used in a lot of ways. It has been uh, twisted around and, uh, and, and misapplied. But uh, I want us this morning to, uh, to, to get a, an understanding uh, of what Jesus is talking about because he's saying here uh, that we're going to do greater works uh, than he did. We need to understand, we need to know uh, exactly uh, what that means. However, we cannot, what, what happens to a lot of people again uh, when we read this verse, we, uh, people jump to this verse and they jump immediately to that works thing. 
uh, that Jesus says, you're going to do the same works I did, uh, but not the same works I did, but you're going to do greater works uh, than I did. And so immediately we tend to jump uh, and start thinking, well, I'm going to walk on water. Uh, you know, I, I know a few of you already think you do. Uh, and we, you know, we immediately begin to think about doing uh, miracles and, and, and works and those kinds of things. Uh, but we miss uh, something that is uh, of the utmost importance uh, in, in this verse. But what he says again, uh, after he says, barely, barely, he says, whoever, whosoever believes in me. We cannot overlook uh, the importance of that statement. Whoever believes in me. Let's not jump to the works things just yet. Let's not jump to the greater works just yet. Let's, let, let's back up uh, to, the, to the condition here that Jesus lays down. There must be, to begin with, before we can talk about works, before we can talk about greater works, we must first talk about uh, this altering experience, this life-altering uh, experience, when Jesus says, you who believe in me, those that believe in me will do works and greater works. We Again, we want to jump forward and we want to just jump right in to the greater works thing. We want to start, uh, well, let's talk about those greater works. I'm, that's exciting to hear uh, talk about doing greater works and doing uh, miraculous things. That's, that's exciting. Yes, it is. Uh, it, it's a marvelous promise uh, that Christ gives to his followers. However, he puts before it an important stipulation. Whoever believes in me. Now let's talk about that word for just a moment. Let's talk about uh, believes in me. What, what exactly uh, is Jesus talking about here? Uh, th this word uh, that he uses here that uh, we have translated as belief uh, is talking about a dynamic Faith, a, 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 again, an, an altering uh, faith, a heart uh, that has been transformed, uh, a heart uh, that has uh, that has been changed. Not just uh, a, a matter of uh, belief, uh, just saying, yeah, I believe there uh, was a Jesus. Uh, I believe he was a teacher. I believe, uh, yeah, even to the point of saying, uh, yeah, I believe he is God. Uh, the difference here in that word and what Jesus is saying is uh, uh, another word that, that we might say it uh, today uh, would be someone who has trusted in Jesus. Again, I remind you, uh, if you want a better context as well, understand who he was talking to. Jesus did not uh, stand up in front of you know, There were plenty of times when Jesus uh, addressed the masses. There were times when Jesus had hundreds and thousands uh, who were gathered around him listening to him teach. And he didn't stand up and, and, and come before that, that huge crowd and, and tell them, you're going to do uh, great works. Who did he say it to? He waited until he was in this spot uh, with his disciples. He, he waited until he was with his closest followers. And then he says to them, uh, you will do the same works that I did. You will do uh, greater works uh, that I did. And so what he's about to talk about hinges uh, on our relationship with Jesus Christ. Let me give you uh, another example. And let's, uh, let's break this down a little clearer, I think, uh, in, in all of our minds. Uh, have you noticed that we don't read anywhere in Scripture uh, that Judas did anything? Right? I mean, we read about Peter and John uh, going to the temple and healing the crippled man uh, on the way to the temple. We read, but we never read about anything that, uh, any great work that Judas did. We don't, we don't read about any healing, any healing because of Judas. We don't read about any great teachings. We don't read anything about Judas except he was a thief and a traitor. That's all we read about him, right? Is anybody in this room surprised that we never read anything about Judas being involved in a healing? Why not? Because he was a traitor. 
there was a thief. He, he wasn't a real disciple. He was in the group. He wasn't. A, well, we're not shocked. We're not surprised. That, you know, nobody has ever sat down and went, I'm sure Judas did something. I just got to find him. You know, well, we just don't do that. We don't expect to find that. We don't think we'll find that. That, that there's no reason for us, not, not, not the slightest reason for us to believe that there is one word recorded. We're not surprised when we read that, that Judas was a thief. Why? That's his character, right? Uh, that's what we see in Judas. We're not surprised by that. That's what we expect. Now, on the other hand, when we read that Peter and John were on their way to the temple, and they see the, the lame man laying at the temple gate, and they say to him, silver and gold have we none, but what we have we give you, rise up and walk. We're not surprised by that, are we? It's not really a shock. Why? Because Peter and John were two of Christ's closest followers. They were two of his closest disciples. When you read through the Gospels, Matter, as a matter of fact, the, the, the contrast is we don't look, go, go looking. I know Judas did something. I just got to find it. On the other hand, we're not, we, we're, we're not surprised when we look through his, oh, Peter did this. Peter preached at Pentecost. We're not surprised that Peter stood up and preached at Pentecost. No. We're, not, we're not surprised uh, at, at, at John. We're not surprised at, at, at James. We're not surprised at, at, the, at the things that God did through these men. They don't shock us in the least, do they? Why? Because we know they were followers of Jesus Christ. You know, if you'd ask Judas, do you believe in Jesus? He would say, yeah, he's standing right there. Right? He believed in him enough to go sell him. You know, that, that's what he, he believed. That, you know, you'd ask him, do you believe in that, that Jesus? Yeah, I believe. There he is. I believe in it. Yeah, I may suffer with him. He, he, but there's a difference here in what Jesus is talking about. When he says believe, he's talking about a, a, a life-altering, life-transforming choice. Uh, an experience uh, with Jesus Christ where we become followers, believers, disciples uh, of Jesus. As I've said before, uh, I, I've gotten kind of uh, shied away uh, from the word Christian because everybody I meet claims to be a Christian. Not everybody I know claims to be a follower of Jesus Christ. That's what Jesus is talking about here. That, that before we get into talking about anything about works, we, we've got to deal with this, this issue. Uh, that there must, it must be preceded by an altering, a life-altering uh, experience of believing in Him. It's amazing to me, uh, the, 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 the guys I see uh, on television and some of those uh, who want to jump right in and, and start talking about works and greater works and, 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 and doing miracles and signs and, and all those things before, and, and not even mention this fact that it's all built upon, all comes back to a relationship with Jesus Christ. That it's built on this life-altering experience of who believes on me, then he'll do these things. And so the first question we have to deal with in this text is our experience, our relationship with, uh, with Jesus Christ. Uh, that, that we're confident, we are aware uh, of, that, uh, of that experience. This message is almost uh, backwards. It's almost as if I'm giving uh, the invitation right out of the gate. Uh, that, that, that before we worry about any of these other things, he comes back to this statement, who believes in me. Now, let's assume you believe in him. Let's move on and see what he says then. Not only is there a life-altering experience here, but there is an affirming example. Look what he says to him. He says, who believes in me will do the works that I do. Who believes in me will do the works that I do. Now, uh, we, we wade off here into some, some fairly uh, choppy waters. 
choppy and deep waters because uh, a lot of folks over the years have taken uh, this passage and began, uh, I believe, to uh, move it around and, uh, and, and do some things with it uh, that I don't think Jesus ever intended. He, as he addressed those disciples, he says to them, you will do the works that I do. Uh, you shall do the works, as the King James says. And what did they do? What were some of the works that he had done? He had opened eyes. He had uh, he had uh, give back uh, the crippled their ability to walk. He had raised the dead. And, and we have a record of the disciples uh, performing and doing uh, those same uh, type works, doing those uh, same things, casting out demons. We have uh, records of them uh, doing that. Now, there are uh, many who take this passage, and, and, and you and I may differ. Uh, here we may go down different roads, but uh, you, you're free to preach next week. Uh, this is my turn. Uh, what uh, some people do with that is they apply that uh, to the whole church. Uh, throughout the church age. I don't think that's accurate when you read the text. He says, you shall, you will do these things. Well, we, we look around, uh, and, and again, uh, there's, uh, again, no man on earth today uh, that fully, that looks and acts and does uh, the things that Jesus did. Uh, you know, there, there are a lot of folks uh, who take this passage and, uh, and, and apply it. Uh, but the fact is, uh, we, you know, there, there are a lot of guys who get up and talk about doing uh, the works. But, but you don't seem to brag too much about raising the dead. Yeah. Uh, so, so we're not doing the works that Jesus did. These are disciples uh, actually did uh, do those works. When Jesus describes here uh, and says in me, you will do those works. You will do those works. Now, the answer that some people give to that is, well, we just don't have the faith. That's not what he said. That's not what he said. He said, you will do those works. He said, you will do it. What he said? He said that to those men gathered. He said, you will do those works. Yeah, hold on for y'all. Bail on me. Hold on. I, I'm going to get to something here uh, in just a minute at, uh, at the end of this text. He says, these works that I will do. He says, they will take place. And they did take place in these men's lives, in their ministry. But then he goes on, and, and, and let's move uh, to what should really concern us here, is he says this. At the end of that verse, he said, and you will do greater works. And you, you will do greater works because I am going to the Father. Now, pay attention to what Jesus just did there. The immediate thought is you're going to do the works I did. Jesus did some amazing works. But he moves and says something there uh, that we need to pay careful attention to. Regardless whether you agree with me or not, that the works he talks about in the first section were for those disciples, not us. Here's what he does. He says, but never mind those works. You're going to do something even greater. That's what ought to catch our attention. Right? If I told you, you can, let's just think about it. Well, you can have works or you can have greater works. Which one you take? That's a no-brainer, right? So he says there will be even greater works. Well, let's well, let's mull that over for a moment. And I, I, again, I'm not discounting miracles, miraculous things at all. Believe God answers prayer. God still does. Prayer. I believe that. Don't misquote me or don't let me don't let me misrepresent my own self. Uh, yeah, I believe but here's what's important. Several things. First of all the word that is interpreted so translated there as works never is translated as miracle. Never. It's not, it's not used that way. It's described as works. But he says here even if you take it and say miracles, he says we will do 
greater works. Let, let's think that through for a minute. Let, let's just imagine, let, let's just assume that, that this word does refer uh, to miracles along the lines of walking on water, giving the blind back their sight, healing uh, you know, the crippled man. Well, let, let's assume that's what, let, let's just play along that that's what the word uh, actually, uh, actually means. Well, if it did, um, well, let's just imagine this conversation. I'm, 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 I'm way out of the scripture here. I'm imagining I said that, okay? I'm not reading this off of any page in my Bible. I am making this conversation up. Hey, Peter, you're a pretty smart guy. You got a good imagination. Jesus said we would do greater, more spectacular works than he did. Um, Peter, how about you thinking up what it is that's more spectacular? What can we do? And Peter scratches his head a minute and he says, what else is? How does somebody walk so walk? Well, no, wait a minute. How about if somebody turns water into what? I don't know. Wait a minute. James pipes up. James says, forget about water. Let's not talk about water. Let's skip water. I know what we ought to do. What's better than healing a man that's blind? What's better than healing a man that's lame? What's greater than healing a sick man? What's greater than healing a man that's half dead? I know. Let's go resurrect somebody that's... Hmm. More spectacular than what Jesus did. Greater than what Jesus did. Hmm. Anybody got any ideas of a miracle you could do that would be greater than what Jesus did? Is you raising your hand or just waving at me, Tom? I'm raising my hand. Somebody to the Lord, somebody to the Don't preach my sermon. Sit over there and quit. <laughs> quit. You aren't supposed to have that answer. Greater works. Can you do a greater, I mean, he, he healed the sick man, he raised the cripple, he gave the blind back their sight, the deaf back their hearing, he gave the mute back their speech, he, you know, he, he healed, he raised the dead, he raised the dead, he wasn't even near. He, you know, what are you going to do greater than the miracles he did? Think about it. When Jesus says you'll do these works, but you'll do even greater, there must be something bigger he's got in mind than even those miracles that he talked about. Now that Tommy has preached my sermon, let me elaborate just a minute on, on this point. Nothing, when you get down to it, nothing is more spectacular in the physical realm than what Jesus has already done. You, 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 there's nothing left to do. There, there, there's no earthly miracle left for you and I to do raising dead I mean when you raise the dead you've pretty much set the bar about as high on the earthly miracles you know uh, uh, only way you can you know about the only way you can talk raising the dead is to be raised from the dead you're, oh wait a minute hmm. we're back to having a problem topping what he did but let's think for a moment about what is great. Let's look at this statement that Jesus made. You will do greater works in light of his larger plan. You know, you know God's got a larger plan, right? He's had it since the beginning. Since the foundations of this earth, he's had a larger plan to bring man into a relationship, into fellowship with himself. That's been his plan all along. He didn't, he didn't send Jesus to earth to, to raise sick people. He didn't send Jesus to earth to give back the, the sight to the blind. He didn't send Jesus to earth to give the deaf back their head. He sent Jesus to earth for one purpose, to redeem man. 
That's his purpose. All those other things, all those miracles, all the everything else he did was leading and pointing to the cross. His, his greater plan is the message of salvation, of redemption. And so when he says here, we're going to do greater works, let's talk about for a moment what the church has been called to do. What those, as he said, who believe on him uh, have been called on to do. We have the, the church has been called on to do greater works geographically. Think about it. Look at these flags up here. God, Christ never ventured, Christ never went to Europe. Christ never went to Rome. He stayed right in that little area uh, of Palestine. If you're real diligent and take a map and you take the Gospels and you draw and you mark the area where Jesus walked, you won't even dull the lead on your pencil because he stayed in a little small area. But today, the church, listen, right here. We're, 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 we're beaming the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. We had a church in Kannapolis doing exactly what we're doing this morning on Facebook Live who got an email back from a person in Denmark who accepted Jesus Christ. Even more miraculous than that, another one of our churches got a letter from Connecticut. Imagine that. Somebody in Connecticut getting saved. Who, who dreamed of it? We are able to do far more geographically. We have missionaries. We have the gospel around the world today. I heard John Hagee uh, talking one day. said so he was a young boy. So they were sitting at the breakfast table one morning and, and, and listening to the radio. That tells you something about the time of it. And said so it came on the radio. They began to talk about satellites and, and, and beaming signals. And said his daddy jumped up and said, that's it. That's it. That's how the gospel will be proclaimed to all the nations of the world. Listen. Greater geographically. Just uh, greater ethnically. Christ, during his ministry, uh, it was mainly to the Jews. Occasionally there was a Jew, a Gentile here or there. But we have taken the gospel there. We are called on to take the gospel across every ethnic line, red, yellow, black, and white. They are precious in his sight. Amen. That's our calling. Yes, we're to do greater works. We've done greater if we walk on water? No. We do greater because we raise the dead or, or, or heal the sick? No. We do greater when we take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the four corners of this world. That's what we're called on to do. We're called on to make an impact. We're not only ethnically, but numerically. Think about it. Already just, just in a few pages of Scripture, Jesus had, what, 12 disciples. One of them was a, a traitor. So he, when he's giving this conference, when he's giving this speech right here, he's talking to 11 people. In the second chapter of Acts, we have 3,000 people added to the church in one day. Greater work. Yeah, we're called to do greater works. We're called to take the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world to every ethnic group, to all people. God, for God so loved the world that he gave us that whosoever believeth in him. We are called on to do things greater spiritually speaking. William Barclay writes, he says these words. I want to read this to get this right. He says, the triumphs of the message of the cross were even greater than the triumphs of Jesus in the days of the flesh. What Jesus Christ, the triumph of the cross, is greater than the works he did, the other works he did in the three years he was on this earth. You tell me which is more important to you, that Jesus walked on water or that he died on a cross and was risen on the third day? Which one matters more? That he gave the deaf back their hearing or that he's alive and well sitting at the right hand of his father? Which one matters more? That, that, that he healed the sick, that he raised the lame, that he did all those miracles, or that he was resurrected on the third day, that he shed his blood and for your forgiveness and for the cleansing of your sin. Which is greater? If you had to choose today and say, Lord, you can only do one of two things. You can walk across that lake or you can die for my sins. Which one are you picking? That's a no-brainer, isn't it, CD? 
He can walk on the water if on the other side of the water he dies on the cross for my sin. How's that? Listen, the greater works. Am I seeing the miracles of miracle? No. No. I, I, I believe in miracles. I, I believe in miracles. Let me tell you, the greatest miracle he ever did was reaching down and saving my soul. Now, Tommy would disagree with me. Tommy would say that the greatest miracle he ever did was reaching down and saving his soul. I hope you'd disagree and say, no, it was my soul. Listen, the greatest work we can do is not walking on water. If you've got a child, and that child is sick, that child is injured, that child is lame, that child is deaf, and you have an option between Jesus Christ saving that child's soul and Jesus Christ healing that child physically, which one are you taking? His soul every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Greater works. Jesus says we are to be about greater works. What, what are we supposed to be? Listen, we're, we're, we're like a lot of people. We want to focus on miraculous instead of the greater works. Listen, the real contest, the real contrast here is not that we need to uh, between the works and greater works. Now that, that's not the challenge. We, we get caught up uh, in, in that. The contrast here is between what Jesus did on earth and what he wants to accomplish through the church in today's time. That's the greater works. That's the greater works. Listen. The great works he wants to do through you is not walking on water. It's not giving blind back their sight. The greater works he wants to do through you is going to your neighbor and tell them about Jesus Christ. That's the greater works. That's what he wants to do. That's what he wants to do through this church. Listen. That's what he wants to do. I, that's the reason I, one, one of the benefits, one of the good things that's come out of what, what we're going through is, again, this ability. Uh, we had the ability all along. We just weren't taking advantage of it, to be honest with you. That we're, 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 we're speaking each week to multiplied thousands through the Internet. The purpose is not to give back the blind their sight, to give the lame back the ability to walk purpose, the greater works that Christ wants to do in his church and through believers is bringing people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's our challenge. That's our task. Maybe the problem in the church today is we have lost our focus on the greater works that God wants us to do. Some of you, you, you've heard me, and I, I, I'm, a, I'm not, I promise, I'm about to get up on my soapbox, but I promise not to stay there long, okay? I promise. Well, no, I don't, but I'm going to try not to stay on my soapbox long. The church in 2020 has become really focused on social ministry. Now, by social ministry, what I'm talking about is feeding the hungry, clothing the poor, those kind of things. There is, hear me, do not misquote me. Those are important. Those have a place. But here is reality. I could train a monkey, I think, to stand out here beside the road and throw cans of beans in people's cars as they go down the road. Anybody can pass out food. The Muslims can pass out food. The atheists can pass out food. But only the church can pass out Jesus. I'm not saying don't pass out beans. 
I'm saying when you pass out beans, you hand them beans with a heap of help in Jesus Christ. That's our greater works. That's what we don't listen. We don't exist. The church doesn't exist. Even we, we again. I said we used to have signs that hung up. People tore them all down. I said church is the only organization in the world that exists for the benefit of those who are not her members. That's our task. Is the greater work of telling people about Jesus Christ. But it comes back to if you believe. There won't be any miracles without belief. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads this morning. There's greater works to do. There's greater works that need to be done. Again, I'm not discounting the miraculous. I've heard, I, I know too many stories personally. I'm not discounting the miraculous. Do not, do not misquote me or misrepresent me. What I'm telling you is the greater work is the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. <laughs> This morning, my prayer in this room is that each one of us, individually and then corporately as a church, we will get serious about the greater work of sharing the gospel. But more importantly, you're here this morning, or you're watching online, and it comes back to that first statement, those who believe in me. If you're here today and you haven't had a life-altering experience with Jesus Christ, if you haven't had that moment, I'm not asking you to do you believe. Bibles say that the demons believe and tremble. I'm asking you, do you have an altering, a life-changing experience with Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If not, I want to ask you to pray this morning and ask Christ into your heart. Ask Him to forgive you and to save you from your sins. As we stand together this morning, I want to ask you to stand. In this lane place, I want to invite you, you to come and kneel here. Kneel where you are, sit, whatever. You're welcome to come. There's room here for you to bow and pray together. Lord, give me a vision. Give me a burden for the greater works. You're here today and you don't know Christ. You don't know Him. You've never had a life-altering experience with Jesus Christ. Can I ask you this morning just to kind of, real quickly, just stick your hand up. Let me pray with you. I won't call your name. I won't embarrass you. I just want to pray for you. If you're online, call me. Put a comment in the, in the section below. Something. Let me know. I want to pray for you. Pray for our church. We'll get a burden, a vision, a heart for greater works. The greater works of sharing the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you today for allowing us to be here. We thank you for your word. <clears throat> God, I just pray today that you would stir our hearts. God, we, we like to talk about the miraculous. But God, there's no greater miracle than the cleansing of our sin, the saving of our soul. God, give us a burden to do greater works, a desire as a church to see people come to know Christ. 
God, for anyone that might be listening online that doesn't know Jesus, God, I pray that you'll deal with their heart. God, it did reach out. They'd contact us, email, phone, something. God, most of all, they did reach out to you. And they'd ask Christ into their heart. God, I pray that you'll take your word this morning. Put it on our hearts. God, that we'd be unable to avoid, unable to ignore the fact that you tell us we're to do greater works. We'll give you the honor for it all, for it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, a couple announcements uh, as we go out. Uh, if, uh, if the deacons would stick around just a minute, uh, let me, I want to talk to you for just a second. Um, and I hope you know who you are because I don't have my list in front of me. Um, if you think you're a deacon and you want to stick around, that'd be all right, too. Uh, but uh, if you would just hang around, if you want to just come up here for a minute, uh, I am going to run to the door back there just speak real quick. Uh, but um, if you would, uh, for the deacons, if you would uh, hang around just one moment. Again, encourage you, if I can, uh, y'all don't do real good at this, but I'm going to try again. If you would, from the back row, pretend you're at a wedding. You know how they do at weddings, kind of row by row. Uh, just kind of go out, and that'll let you keep uh, our, our distance um, from each other. And then you can go out in the parking lot and just have a ball. Uh, Melissa and Kevin said they're going to quit sitting on the front row if I didn't quit letting the back row go first. Uh, and, and so, <laughs> but uh, like I said, if you will, just uh, like I said, um, again, practice your social distancing and all that good stuff as we, uh, as we go out. All right. Thank you. Deacons will stick around just a moment.